Hey everybody, it is Kirsten from Big Daddy's Barbecue and I am here today with Nelson White from Outlaw Smokers. He is actually a local guy who builds pellet grills and wood burning grills for the people that want to kind of do the smoking at home. So tell us a little bit about you and how you got started. So we build up pellet grills uh, and wood burners and charcoal smokers. We do a little bit of everything. Uh, probably what most people know us for is our pellet grills. Uh, we started the pellet grill when we brought in sawtooth pellet grills about eight years ago uh, i've been working in smokers barbecuers forever seems like yeah um about eight nine years ago we brought sawtooth pellet grill brand under the outlaw smokers and uh and then that's pretty yeah. much what uh, the general public knows yeah for. rest is history right yeah. you took it in and now you just kind of you make them yeah. we were talking about earlier how you do them for commercial use and personal right right so we we do uh have commercial units uh these are for your restaurants, your caterers, your large families. Yes, <laughs> families of twenty or more. Yeah. And then, then we have our backyard units where for the uh, for the barbecue enthusiasts, and we have them ranging for from beginner to really expert. Yeah. Uh, for your serious enthusiasts, uh, the pellet grill just makes it so easy to cook uh, for just anybody. It's almost like using your home oven. You just set your temperature, and you're good. Yeah, I was reading it on your website actually, where it was kind of like let the the smoker do the work for you. Bring it up to temp, put the meat on it, and go enjoy a beer or something. Pretty much, exactly. Good. With the uh, the cook and hold uh, technology we have in our controllers using the meat probe, you can take off, play golf, and when your beat's done, it'll shut the grill down to 150. Really? Wow. Don't worry about overcooking while you're gone. That's fancy. It kind of makes my smoker at home look a little <laughs> chintzy, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm kind of like, that's nice. <laughs> I kind of want one of those. No, it's very pretty. And you can tell that there is a lot of time and care put into so putting our, these things together. All of our smokers are handmade and, uh, and uh, half of our business is custom smokers. So okay. it's something that we don't do uh, just to, in our general uh, patterns. Uh, we do a lot of cu custom smokers, custom barbecue trailers uh, for the really serious guy, yeah. the competition guy. Um, and then, you know, so there's something specific they need to fit their back patio. Uh, say they're building an outdoor kitchen or they just need it to fit in a certain space. Mm -hmm. uh, we do we do custom. The custom work. That is really cool. So tell me a little bit about coming from Texas to Idaho. And you were talking about <clears throat> how the last 10 years, it's just really started to boom for you. Sure. Uh, yeah. When I first moved up here, barbecue was an afterthought. And, and yes. it just wasn't yes. anywhere to go to get good barbecue. Yeah. I apologize if there were barbecuers up here. I <laughs> Just the little guys that, you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so I was always going home and getting my fix on barbecue mm -hmm. and Mexican food. So the two two main staples. Yeah. And and really, you know, uh, we when we found out about uh, the, the the need or the uh, the lack of yeah. uh, opportunities up here, they really clued us in. It's like, okay, well, we can take what we were doing back home as a hobby and really build it up as a business here in Idaho. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, Big Daddy's, we started out of a trailer with a smoker in the backyard forever. So 10 years ago is totally different from now, where every time you turn around, there's definitely a barbecue guy out there. Um, but back when we started, when you kind of came into town, it really was the little guys. There was maybe two or three of us total that were out in our food trucks and our trailers doing the barbecue game. Yeah. So I think it's awesome that you're bringing and, and the ability of people. Is, is Probably one of my favorite barbecue places. Oh, good. Now, so I'm glad <laughs> that I found it. I'm a little that. nervous <laughs> when you're like, I'm from that. Texas. It makes me a little nervous, but I'm so no, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I appreciate it. That is really cool. It's nice to know that I don't have to cook it all myself. <laughs> right. We can do it on the days you don't there want you to. There you go. <laughs> okay, Nelson. So we were talking a little bit about how you can do custom builds or you have just like your standard starter unit. Would you say that this is pretty popular for people that are just starting out in the smoking? Absolutely. Uh, this is our outlaw smoker. It's the 680. And it is uh, one of our most popular units. It's a heavier steel, so it's more like your wood burner, your stick burner thickness. Yeah. Uh, the sawtooth pellet grill is more your lighter gauge metal. Um, that's probably your more entry level. And they both work the same. There's just a few features on this one that make it a little better or a little easier to use. It's probably more accurate. They're both they're both quality wise are the same. A little larger hopper, clean outdoor, and it just. It, it's we have something to fit every budget or yeah. we try to fit every budget so that you don't have to go buy one of the imports from china yes <laughs> well i mean that's a good part about being <clears throat> local though is you guys have options you can custom build it for what you need and you actually get to see it and feel it right. have it in front of you well in the service um you know it, 
if you if we're right here, if you need something, a new igniter, or it's not working right, uh, we can take care of you. We're otherwise you're calling into some eight hundred number and trying to figure it out from there. Yeah, you know what? I think that's like the best selling point about it. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll you don't have to call the one eight hundred numbers. <laughs> no. So tell me a little about what your favorite things are to smoke when you're not eating Big Daddy's barbecue. I tell you what, um, you know, brisket's always my go-to favorite. But I will say, since moving to Idaho, I've learned about tri-tip. Never heard of tri-tip in Texas until I got to Idaho, and people kept saying, well, "What the heck is that?" Yeah. And it's a nice, quick, easy fix. Uh, something you can fix for dinner in about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. two hours. So, I for for really quick. If I'm in a hurry, try tip a love. Uh, chicken thighs. I mean, I know not everybody's yes. chicken chicken nope. fans, but you know I like a good chicken thigh. Uh, and with our seasonings that w that we use, uh, not too bad. Chicken is kind of like that sneaky meat or the sneaky protein that people don't really think about when yeah. they're smoking. Um, I think the number one thing I hear at caterings is, "Wow, that chicken was way better than I thought." It was oh, sh for sure. We did a uh, event down in Las Vegas a number of years ago. And uh, the other manufacturer was making uh, sirloin. And because we were less known, we got handed the chicken. And it was amazing to go through the crowd and everybody was talking about, you've got to try the chicken. You've got to oh, try the good. chicken. And one of the cool things on a pellet grill that most people don't realize, it doesn't dry your chicken out. You'll get a nice moist chicken breast where yeah. a gas grill is going to dry it out. And also you don't get that good smoke flavor. Yeah, no, that's so funny that you guys said, hey, chicken. I know. Who would have thought, thought right? So we are healthy a little bit here and there. <laughs> it's all about the beef until the chicken comes in. <laughs> exactly. That exactly. is awesome. So you said that tri-tip's one of your favorite things to smoke or one of the easiest and quickest things. Is there a certain rub that you like to use? Uh, well, uh, we use our Outlaw Smokers brisket rub. Okay, all right. It's <laughs> our go-to uh, rub. Uh, there are others that I really like. Uh, yeah, I can't think of them off the top of my head. But, <laughs> That's okay. But That's all right. We, we, do our own, we do our own rubs here. So uh, we have a, a beef, a chicken, and a steak, and just a general. Uh, and it's called our trail dust, and we really like it. So trail dust? It goes on everything. Good. Yeah, I mean, that's what we do with, I mean, our brisket rub. It's very much like I put it in everything. Yeah, so. well, we, we say trail dust. It's good on everything because it gets on everything. Oh, there you go. So, that's good. Can you buy that anywhere? You can get it from here or from our website. We're in Garden City, uh, down off of East 37th at 405, unit number six, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. When we're not golfing. Yeah. <laughs> or... Going to a barbecue. So I have a little fun activity. We're going to fill in the blank. When you are smoking meat, you always, always, always need to. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, well, prep. Prep is everything. Yes. Uh, the, set, the, the smoking is what gives it the flavor, but it's not ever going to be good if your prep's not right. Yes, I like that. On the prep, I know that for us, we like to let all of our meat sit in the dry rub for at least an hour to 24 hours. Yeah, and it really depends on what I'm cooking. Um, for uh, a brisket, I'm probably going to put uh, put it on maybe 20 minutes before. Mm -hmm. But on a brisket, it's the only thing that I let it come to room temperature. And that's because I want it to cook evenly throughout. Yeah. Uh, I put my tri-tip on and I will season it right before it goes on so it doesn't dry the meat out. And that, that I leave cold because I like my medium rare. Okay. And so I can get a good finish on the outside yeah. with it still being medium rare on the inside. Okay. Uh, chicken, uh, you just want to get the sinew and the, the junk that, you know, they don't clean off. Mm -hmm. And um, there again, I season right before it goes on. So the salts don't pull all the moisture out. Uh, and steak, I don't season it till after I'm finished cooking, but that's just me. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I like it. So what a lot of people know and what we see on a daily basis is people kind of gravitate towards imports or a trigger. Can you tell us a little bit about how this will make their lives not only easier and their meat <laughs> tastes better? Sure. Well, you know, ever oh, they're all decent grills. Uh, I'm not going to say that they're not they do a decent job uh one some of the things that set us apart though is our controller uh is more accurate we use a pid controller so that it will hold the temperature within five degrees okay. so you're going to get a lot better control versus a direct feedback controller that most of the imports use where you're going to get a 10 plus minus 10 degree swing so you're going to get 20 degree 30 degree swing yeah. where it's chasing the temperature uh, because of that controller uh, we're able to predict where the temperature is going to go and it holds it steady. It doesn't overreact if you open the lid to check your meat. It shouldn't be checking, but if you check your meat, yeah. uh, whereas a direct feedback controller that's on most of the imports, uh, it says, oh, I'm cold. It's got a 
and then it starts just dumping pellets in and you'll get this huge temperature spike, yeah. which can sear the outside of your meat, keep, keep you from getting some of the smoke flavor in. Um, the other thing is our controller uh, and our firebox, uh, our unique design of our firebox lets us get temperatures as low as 150, where all your imports are gonna bottom out at 175, 180. So you can get a little better cook on a fish or yeah. smoked jerky. Okay. And then it'll go up to 600 degrees. So you can really sear steak where your imports are, most of them uh, are around 400, 425, maybe on a good day in the summer, yeah. the first year. And then we work on a lot of them. So we have a lot of experience. Uh, and then after a few years, they're about 350, 375. Okay. 